Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be doing a short demonstration of mainframe and RPA. My name is Q Mangus. I'm a product marketing manager here at Microfocus. We're joined by Chris Lall, a senior product manager, and Scott Vitkus, a senior systems engineer. Today we're going to give you a short overview of mainframe and the RPA and then show you a demo. For that, I'm going to turn it over to Chris Lall and Scott Vitkus. Hello, this is Chris Lall, senior product manager in the host connectivity team for Extra Reflection and InfoConnect products. Today we'll be demonstrating some solutions around RPA. All right, so let's give a little uh, background on what robotic process automation is. First of all, it's software that can be easily programmed to do basic tasks across applications that human workers currently do. The software robot can be taught a workflow with multiple steps and applications, such as receiving forms, sending receipts on messages, uh, checking forms for completeness. Pretty much anything that a human can do, you know, a robot can be programmed to do with RPA. RPA software is designed to reduce the burden of repetitive, simple tasks on employees. And some examples of RPA software, MicroFocus RPA, UiPath, Blue Prism, just a few uh, of the tools in the market used uh, to automate processes. Why is RPA popular right now? Well, first of all, it automates those repetitive tasks that end users do and that can be automated today with the new RPA technology. It improves productivity because human users can be put on other tasks that are more you know, higher priority and things that robots can't currently do. It allows you to keep up with the competition. So if somebody else is improving customer service with their automation, it means you know, your organization is probably going to want to do that as well. Error reduction. Software robots don't make a lot of errors these days, whereas, of course, we know that there's always data entry issues when, uh, when humans are behind the keyboard. And I talked a little bit about improving customer service. Ultimately, a lot of the automation that gets put in place is uh, allowing organizations to uh, give better customer service. So now where things get interesting is, uh, for me anyways, is when RPA projects need to involve the mainframe and, you know, companies and our customers uh, that are working on RPA projects, they come to us when they need access to host data in their RPA projects. We have a couple of approaches uh, to RPA, you know, integrating the mainframe in RPA scenarios. Uh, we do that with a single product called Host Access for RPA. And uh, within that product, there really are are two technology approaches you can take uh, to get to uh, host data. Uh, one is a UI-based approach, and the other one is an API-based approach. And we also separate those uh, in a couple of terms you've probably heard in the past, HALAPI, High-Level Language Application Program Interface. It's been a, a standard that's been around for many, many years now. And then uh, REST Web Services, so another way to um, you know, use host data in your integration projects. And we talk about some typical scenarios, you know, the ones, the low-hanging fruit of uh, robotic process automation projects that we see the repetitive tasks, you know, is really a, a typical scenario of a, a software robot replacing a human end user that does a lot of tedious or repetitive tasks. I see, you know, call center agents uh, do a lot of different things that can be taken over by robots. And we see that today, evidenced today in chat bots and automated call systems and so forth. And a lot of times there's um, automation uh, sitting behind these things. So now I'd like to introduce uh, Scott to do a demo. Hi, I'm Doug Vitkus, Senior System Engineer with MicroFocus, and today we're going to be demoing robotic process automation for the mainframe. What we want to do is give an overview of what automating a host application could look like. So first, we're going to start with our emulator. So what I want to do is be able to connect to the emulator and then navigate through the host like I would. So I'm connected, navigate to the host application, log in as a, as a regular user, and then get to the application that I want to look at. So in this case, I might stop at this menu, and what I'm tasked to do is go look at some account details for a given account number. So I select number one on my menu option, and I enter my account number that I want to look at, and I want to maybe look at the customer name and retrieve that as part of my you know, notes or part of my report that I'm, I'm gathering information for, and just to verify that the, the system that I'm 
uh, cross-checking with has the same values. So then from that, I will I can navigate back to my menu and then start again with a new account number and validate uh, that name as well, and so on as, as a repeatable process. So, <clears throat> in, you know, instead of manually doing this, if I have multiple uh, processes that I need to integrate with or multiple applications I need to integrate, I can incorporate this this process into a workflow. And so to demonstrate that, what we want to do is look at what it would look like in, in a uh, RPA uh, process, and we're going to use MicroFocus RPA to, to demonstrate this. <clears throat> so what we can do is record these, these uh, movements or these navigation uh, to the host emulator by setting up our designer, which we're going to be using. And I want to record terminal emulator, emulators. And then I need to select which terminal emulator I need to run against. In this case, I'm going to select MicroFocus uh, Reflection Desktop. And we can choose from the various different emulators that we have. And then also, when I configure this session, I want to make sure that this session is configured with a an, an, uh, short name, a Halapi short name of A. And what that does is signify that I'm using the Halapi interface that the RPA engine is going to use to interrogate the uh, host screen for me. So once I get that configured, I'm not going to go through the recording process, but I've, I've pre-recorded these, these steps here. And in this case, I've pre-recorded the, the steps of walking through the screen, um, select, uh, sending a, a value to the, to the menu option, hitting Enter, waiting for the screen to settle. And then I variableized the values that I want to select from the screen. In this case, the last name, and then the uh, first name. So I'm going to, going to take off those area based on row and column off of this IBM host. And then once I'm done collecting that data, I'm going to hit the F, F3 to return back to the menu. So what that would look like, and I can uh, get this in a process flow now in integrating a spreadsheet. Let's say I have value set up in a spreadsheet of account numbers that I want to look up. And I can read that value from a spreadsheet. And then I'm going to format it to make sure it's a, a string. And then I'm going to send that to my recording that I've added to my workflow. That's this, this uh, flow here. And then I'm going to write that value out to a report. Now, this value can, this can be added to another workflow where I want to, uh, to update a, maybe an external database or a data source with that same information. So if I go ahead and, and run this against my host, I'm already parked at the menu screen. So it should take over. It, it takes a little bit because I'm running from the designer. If I actually publish this to the robot, it'll run quite a bit faster. So you see it, it navigated to, to the screen, grabbed, the, uh, and, uh, grabbed that information from, uh, from the host screen. And I can look at interrogate the output that came out, the values. So I got the first name Bruce, and then and then I write I write that information out to the file. So that that's fine for a single threaded process. So again, we can we can take this process then and compound that into a a looping feature. So if I want to add uh, and and iterate through the entire list or entire rows of my spreadsheet, let's say it's time to go get a cup of coffee or something, I can automate this and just go through the whole process of um, all the numbers that I have um, in my report that I need to process and, and pr uh, provide information or ver validate the information for, so I can include a workflow that will include reading the entire spreadsheet or in each row single, each row at a uh, single at a time, process that account number and then iterate through the entire row and then log off. So. I'm going to provide my login credentials. I've already recorded a login sequence. It, then the get account um, sequence that I've already recorded, and then my log off sequence so I can finish up the session. So now if I run that, you'll see that, again, running from the designer, it's going to run a little bit slower. And we can see it, it navigating. It logged me in, parked me at the uh, menu that I'm looking for. We'll, we'll see these things turn green once they, they've completed successfully. Um, it'll grab the session again, pass the, the value in there, pass the account number, and then navigate back and, and iterate through that process um, 
the number of times that I've requested it to, to go out to the and read that spreadsheet. Just one more time. Again, it runs slower because I'm running in the designer just for visual effect. If we publish this as an actual robot and automate it, it'll perform much faster. So then what I can do is go out and see what the, what the results are. So in this case, I just wrote out a file to simulate a report. You know, if I bring up this file, I, I wrote out the values that are collected. So I only iterated through three of those in this instance. So it collected names for each one of these account numbers. Now likewise, the uh, server-based product that we have, the Veristream, we can also incorporate into our uh, designer as well. And we, we uh, did a, a session on this a couple of months ago, but talking about automating uh, server side or server-based API stuff and integrating those in test as well. So we've, I've created the same process in a what we call our Veristream Studio, and I, I'm going to get uh, output a REST call. So I can make a web service call um, from the designer to collect the same information that I'm looking for. Now this is a running on a, this REST or service is running on a remote uh, server that's going to uh, collect and navigate the, the host in the same manner and collect the same data for me. So I'm going to read that the same spreadsheet to get the value but pass it into a, a REST service. So I can run this thing and it collects the information and sends it to the service and we don't have to actually see the screens navigate. It runs quite a bit faster. So if I interrogate this, I can return the, the first name here and the last name came back. Then, then I write the same values out to the report and um, execute it that way. And likewise, I can create this this operation or this flow into a recurring or loop that'll process the entire spreadsheet. And if I run that, it'll call that web service for each value that reads from this, the the uh, spreadsheet that we created and get those values. So these are the same processes, just one running on a server and one running on my local desktop with the emulator. And we can also demonstrate, like I said, demonstrating the uh, Veristream uh, server-based product. You, you'll increase your uh, performance, and also we can provide scalability for threading, multiple uh, threading your, your service calls as well, so provide the performance that you're looking for. Thank you. Thank you everyone for viewing this video about mainframe and RPA. Hope you can see the benefits of the solutions that we showed you today. If you'd like more information about host access for RPA, feel free to visit us at microfocus.com or feel free to reach out to any one of us. Our email addresses are there up on the screen. Thank you.